Hey there, mech fans. So in one of my previous videos, you may recall that I listed Zone of the Enders as one of my top five favorite mecha video game series. Well, you can imagine my excitement when earlier this year, Konami announced a PS4 remaster for Zone of the Enders, the second runner. However, the game will not be released until September 2018. So in the meantime, I figured this would be an excellent opportunity to explore some of the series' other offerings, starting with the original game. So strap yourself in as we take a look at some high-speed robot action. Released in 2001 as an exclusive for the PlayStation 2, Zone of the Enders transports players to the year 2173, where mankind has colonized Mars but has settlements as far-reaching as Jupiter. Antilia is one of these settlements, but it has come under attack from the Mars-based military organization Barum. The United Nations Space Force Detachment stationed on Antilia are quickly defeated by Barum and its advanced mechs known as Orbital Gears. During the ensuing chaos, a young colonist by the name of Leo Stenbuck accidentally discovers the Orbital Gear known as Jehuti and becomes its pilot or frame runner. With the help of Jehuti's onboard AI system, Ada, it's up to Leo to escape Antilia and deliver Jehuti to the UN Space Forces. Now, you might be wondering, doesn't this sound a lot like the first episode of Mobile Suit Gundam? Well, there's a reason for that. Zone of the Enders was produced by the legendary game director Hideo Kojima. Although best known for his work on the Metal Gear Solid series, Kojima is also a huge fan of the mecha genre and loves to draw inspiration from series like Gundam. And while we're talking about Metal Gear, it's also worth mentioning that Zone of the Enders came bundled with a demo for Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Anyways, let's get back to the game itself. Once you take control of Jehuti, you'll be flying between different sectors of the space colony and destroying countless enemy units. Now combat is where this game truly shines. As you can see, the combat is fast-paced and adrenaline-inducing. Here's how it works. Each area has free-roaming enemy squads of 2-4 to four units that will engage you if you get close enough. From that point on, you'll have to outmaneuver each unit and destroy them before reinforcements arrive. Once a squad is defeated, you'll usually get a healing item or some ammunition, but some enemies will also drop passcodes, which you can use to unlock new sub-weapons or unlock certain programs that you'll need to advance the storyline. However, there's more to combat than just slashing your way through enemies. Zone of the Enders features destructible environments, some of which contain survivors. So if you're not careful, they might end up dead, which will drastically affect your overall ranking at the end of the game. Aiding you in combat are a handful of unlockable sub-weapons, such as the Javelin, Phalanx, or my personal favorite, the Halberd. But more often than not, you'll be using Jehuti's two main weapons, the Energy Shot and the Energy Blade. The Energy Shot can lock onto enemies while dashing, but you can also charge a shot and throw it for more damage. But if you really want to have some fun, you can actually grab enemies and throw them into walls or even other enemies. And last, but certainly not least, is the Energy Blade an effective melee weapon that pairs well with Jehuti's dash ability. Enemies tend to shield themselves, but with a quick boost you'll be able to get behind them and unleash a fury of devastating blade attacks. Now, as much as I love this game, I will admit it's far from perfect. For starters, it's an extremely short game, with most playthroughs only lasting 3-4 to four hours. That means it has very little replayability, unless you're trying to get a perfect ranking. The game's combat, while exciting, does become a bit repetitive after a while, and outside of a few interesting boss fights, there is a real lack of enemy variety. Meanwhile, the game's story is also somewhat lacking, given the time constraint. Just as we're starting to learn more about Jehuti and Bahram's intentions, the game ends. I mentioned earlier that this game feels like an episode of Gundam, and I honestly think that's the best way to describe the game. It's just one episode in the Zone of the Enders series. And like most episodes, it left me wanting more. I was especially intrigued by the game's unique mech designs, and yes, say it with me, this is a cockpit. Yoji Shinkawa, another veteran of the Metal Gear Solid series, is the mastermind behind the game's mechanical designs, and I have to say he did a really great job. 
These mechs are quite different from the usual mechs you would see in something like you know, Gundam or Armored Core. In Zone of the Enders, the orbital gears are powered off of a substance known as Metatron, which actually lets the mechs heal themselves in a kind of a weird organic fashion, not unlike something you'd see in Evangelion, but really cool stuff. If you've never played it before, you can go find the PS2 version, usually for very cheap, but I recommend getting the Zone of the Enders HD collection for PS3. You can find the HD collection for relatively cheap nowadays, so I recommend picking it up if you have a PS3. There is an Xbox 360 version, but it's just a giant mess. Just, just don't bother with it. Anyways, that'll do it for this episode. Take it easy, and I'll catch you next time on Mecha Mondays.